I've had quite a number of questions about number 9 and number 10 on the week 2 homework. I'm going to look at a couple of examples here and show you how I would do these in Excel. It's important to note here that uh, I use Excel 2013. Some of you might have a, a, an older version. It will generally do the same thing, but it might have a different step or two. So pay attention here, and hopefully you can figure it out. Uh, if you uh, do not have uh, Excel 2013, I'm pretty sure that it's uh, available in Citrix, and you can get it and do it virtually uh, in the Citrix lab. But let's go ahead and take a look at this one. This is number nine. They give us some data. Looks like hours spent studying versus test score. They want us to find first uh, the regression uh, equation. Um, then they will want us to pick out which graph it is. And then I think they want us to do some plug and chug type problems. The first thing I would do here is I would go in here, the little window says click to copy table. I would click that. And I would say, open, let's see if it'll let me open in Excel right there. Open in Excel. Say, open. You may not have that. This is just on my computer. All right, now to get uh, the equation or get the, first of all, we're going to get a scatter graph. I'm going to left click, drag and cover all of the data, including um, the labels here, the hour spent studying, test score. Then I'm going to go up in Excel to insert, and I'm going to do a scatter plot. It's the one that looks like it's got lots of little dots there. So I'm going to click scatter, scatter plot, and then I'm going to uh, choose the top left one in my case. It's the simplest one. Now here it is. I don't have to worry about it being a uh, uh, the titles and things being uh, on this graph because I'm using, using it to get the equation and I'm going to use it to match the correct graph. I could change the title right there, but what we want to do is go to one of the dots, right click on it, and say add trend line. Now, notice when I say add trend line, another little menu pops up over on the right side. What I want to do over there is I want to check the box that says display equation on chart. All right, when I do that, it gives me the regression equation, which is awesome. Now, all right, let's take that regression equation. Let's move it up to here. I'm going to see if I can make it a little bit larger for you to see. I'm going to make it about 20. Oops, I'm not covering it. Hit enter. There it is. 7x plus 29. Wow, good to know. Now, what I'm going to do is while I am here, I'm going to make a cool little calculator. And if you'll pay attention, you can do the same. I enlarged my uh, screen a little bit so that you could see this. I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to just in a, any box, I'm going to type an X. Over here, I'm going to type a Y. I'm going to put, that's not a Y, that's a 7, a Y. Now, underneath the X, I'm going to, I'm just going to put a 1 for right now. And underneath the Y, I'm going to type an equal sign, and then I'm going to I'm going to look at this equation, this regression equation that equals 7 times in Excel times is an asterisk. And I'm going to fix it where it will copy whatever is right under the X. So I clicked on that. So I've got equals 7 times whatever that cell is. It may not be C12 for you. It would be wherever you clicked on. Plus 29. Let me show you what that does. That makes a calculator because I know they're going to ask us questions about what about an X value of 3? Well, you would get a Y value of 50. Let me show you one other important thing here. 
this equation that I got, let's see if I can pull it over a little bit. Make it smaller, maybe, so that I can still use my little calculator. This equation is going to help me answer questions, but it is only good for x values within this range, this range of 1 to 6. If they were to give me an x value of, uh, let's say, 12 or 15 or 20, it wouldn't be meaningful because it would be outside of the ranges of x that I base this equation on. Now, let's take a look at our uh, homework problem again. I've already answered uh, this here, but I want you to notice, I know it's correct because I did it right here, 7x plus 29, 7.000 times x plus 29.000. And you say, Brent, why are all the zeros there? Well, it says to round to three decimal places, and even if they're whole numbers, you've got to get those decimals in there. Now it says, choose the correct graph. Well, I knew it was D. Take a look, first of all, at B and C. They have negative slopes, and mine definitely does not have negative, a negative slope. Let's pull it over here. And you notice that I have one point here. One. Notice this, the correct answer has uh, some points above and below the line, it always will because it's the line of best fit. It's going to have lines or dots, should be on both sides. Notice the one choice A, which also has a positive slope. It has uh, dots, most of the dots are underneath, and that would not be actually a fit there. And there's other ways of telling this. You can ex magnify this. Let's see if it'll bring it up. You can see it here. You notice here is a point. Uh, what is that? That's at 1. Uh, and it looks like 20, 40, 60. Now these are in 10s. 10, 20, 30. Looks like in the mid 30s for 1 and for 2. Let's see if we can locate those. 1, 36, 2, 37. Yeah. I could also look on my graph and say, well, does it have a 6 and a 73? Hang on. Uh, 6, so, yeah, 73. So it should be pretty apparent which is the correct graph. The first thing that I always look at is this one's got a positive slope. In other words, it's going uphill. That eliminates the two middle choices. It's either uh, A or D. And notice that uh, A, take the last point, for example. It's underneath the bar. And on my actual graph right there, it's above the bar. That's just some little pointers. Let's see what else we needed to answer here. Let's see. You don't want my email, do you? Um, predict an x value for 3. All right. I'm going to go to my little calculator, put a 3 in, and it's 50. Notice right there the answer is 50. Predict an x value for 4.5. Let's put in 4.5. Hit the enter button. All I'm doing is saying 4.5 times 7 plus 29, and it gives me 60.5. And I'm sure I got that right, too. 60.5. X for 12. Here is a trap question. X for 12. Notice 12 is outside the range of my original data, so that would not be meaningful. If you put a 12 in there, you will get an answer. But it's not meaningful because that 12 is not between 1 and 6. So my answer to that one would be not meaningful. Finally, for 1.5, let's try this, 1.5, I get 39.5. Let's see, 39.5, we nailed it. All right, let's take a look now at number uh, Number 10, I think that was another one some of you had trouble with. It's very similar. All right, hang on just a second. Number 10. I'd already answered it. Number 10 is a very similar problem. Here's the one that I did. The first thing you would want to do is click to copy the data. Tell it to open in Excel. There is the data. Let me see if I can make it a little larger.
There we go. That looks better. Um, now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to Insert. I'm going to choose that scatter plot again. Choose the first one. There it is. Now, remember what I did. I just right click on one of the dots, say Add Trend Line. When I do, I get this nice little menu. I'm going to say Display Equation on Chart. I'm going to pick it up and move it over here so you can see it. I don't even need to make it any larger, do I? I'll still try to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. It's bigger. 2.0365 plus 114.9. Let's see if they wanted this rounded to... Uh, Three decimal places, yes. So to three decimal places, it would be 2.036. I would have rounded that to seven. Um, plus 114. Oh, we don't have enough accuracy here. This is a problem. And you say, why is it a problem? Well, in, on my graph, I don't have enough accuracy. You know, I've got the uh, slope is 2.0365. That's fine. The y-intercept is 114.9. So here's another cool way to do this. Just pick a cell, say equals. Start typing the word slope. And it shows up. It says, do you want to do that? Sure. Now, notice with the slope, I first cover the known Y's. Here are the Y's. Just the numbers under the Y's. I put a comma. It says the known X's. Here are my known X's. I'm going to close that parentheses out. Boom. I get more accuracy. 2.0364583. Now, this is the slope. I'm going to type slope right there. Slope. Right uh, here, I'll do the y-intercept. And it, what do you do? You just say equals, intercept. Double-click on intercept right there. Inter known y's, boom, comma, known x's. Close the parentheses. Bang! Instead of 114.9, I get, well, it's actually 114.89583. All right, let's pull this back up. Now, so 114.89, yep, nailed that. 2.036, yep, nailed that. So actually, I can get even more accuracy by using the slope and y-intercept functions within um, Excel. All right, so I'm going to set up my little calculator down here. I'm going to say uh, X, and I'm going to put my Y here. And I don't remember what they asked me, but I'm just going to put a 1 for X as a placeholder. Under Y, I'm going to say equals. Uh, I can put, you know, this number. I can click on that, or I could have just typed in 2.036. Um, but I'm going to actually click on that cell and use an asterisk to say multiplied by whatever I input right there plus this value. All right, so, you know, I don't know how many decimal places I need to round to. Maybe uh, we don't worry about that until we see what uh, values. The first thing they're going to ask us is about identifying the graph. Let's see if I can move this over. Notice that it is a positive slope. You got one, the, the left one and the right one are above the line. Looks like those two are kind of on it. A little under, a little under. So let's take a look at our choices on that graph. See if it's easy to tell. First, I rule out B and D because that, that doesn't make sense. And then look at A. Now it looks kind of close, but I got three above. Here I got, uh, here's my leftmost above, rightmost above. 
That's good. The only problem you have with A is if you blow it up. You'll notice that it has 2, 2, 2, 2, and then this. Then if you look closely at C choice, notice how it is the one that most closely matches what we had here on our graph in Excel. Let's look at one more thing. Let's look. Uh, all right. Predicting. All right. Predictive value for x equals 160. Check your range here. It looks like it goes from 70 up to 190. 70 is the lowest, 190. So 160 would work. So let's put in 160. And I get 440.729. Note you could say 160 times 2.0365 plus 114.9 and get the answer. I just like using Excel because it makes it so much easy when you do the same thing over and over again. So let's see if we were correct. You know we were. A 440.656. Oh, and you say, Brent, th this is different. You want to know why it's different? It's because this value, they used the rounded to three decimal places. Let's go in and change our little equation here. Hang on just a second. I've got to type the numbers in. I'm going to pull it over to another screen and type these numbers in like they used. Let's see. Instead of uh, clicking on A16 or B11, I'm going to go in and use 2.036 to three decimal places because that's what happens when you get answers that are a little different. And then on... Uh, for the y-intercept, I'm going to use 114.896. Let's see what we get now. We nailed it. 440.629. Well, oh, we didn't nail it. Huh, this is interesting. Well, you say, well, how, why is it not exact? Well, I would have to say that the people doing this are providing the answers Fortunately for us, the uh, answers vary enough that we can tell, 440, 542. It's out in the decimal places, so the person preparing the answers for this used a little different algorithm or something there, a little more accuracy or less accuracy. I still know that my answer is correct. It's a tiny bit off. It's in the hundredths place. Let's look at the next one. For a value of 90. All right, let's put a value of 90 in here. We're hoping to get 298, around 298. Put in 90. Hit the Enter button, 298.1. Yeah, we got that. All right, I'm expecting a trick problem now. 140, that's not a trick. That's between 70 and 190. Let's put in 140 and hope we get around 399. 399.909, nailed it. Look at the last one. You still haven't tried to trick us yet. 210, there is the trick. Notice that 210, this, that my X is, the lowest one is 70, the highest one is 190. This uh, regression equation would only be good for values in that range. 210 is out of range. Hopefully this has helped you. I've enjoyed doing it.